Hey everyone, Rose here, and it's time for the materials. This is the last video for this model, and in this one I'll be showing you how I did the baking and texturing. I originally tried to do the baking in Blender, but I ran into quite a few issues, so instead I'm gonna be using Xnormal for this one. It's a bit janky, but it's free, and I ended up with really good normal maps. For those of you who want to try it out, I'll leave a link to the download in the description below. Anyway, for the rest of the process I'm using Blender as usual, so without further ado, on with the video. Before I can export and bake my model, I need to prepare it a bit. So the first thing I do is add a triangulate modifier to all my objects. Then I start a new Blender file and bring the high poly and low poly meshes. It's really important in this case to start a new Blender file or at least use a copy of your objects, because while preparing for the bake, I'm going to be making destructive changes to the model. Once I have all the objects imported, I start organizing them into separate collections to make the whole situation a bit more easy to manage. I pretty much make a high poly and a low poly group for each like set of objects. Once I have organized everything into collections, it's time to prepare the low poly model itself for baking. First thing I do is apply all the modifiers, including the triangulate modifier and the mirror modifier. Then I offset the stacked modifiers. That means I go around all over one side of the model and make sure I've selected every single face on that side. Then with sync select turned on in the UV view, I grab all of those pieces that I've just selected and push them to the side. Then I repeat that same process for all the other objects that have mirrored UVs. By offsetting the UV map like this, I can make sure that the baking engine sees the whole model rather than having just like an edge along the center. But at the same time, it doesn't try and put the bake for both halves of the model on the same point in the texture so I don't end up with any weird glitching on the final normal map. Also, keep in mind that now this UV map is kind of broken, since one side of the model isn't mapped to the texture anymore. So if you want to check your textures or your bakes and make sure they look good, you'll have to go back into a file that either still has a mirror modifier, or if the mirror modifier is applied, make sure that the UV islands are still stacked. In this model here, I have a couple of objects like these tufts of fur here that have a mirror modifier, but they don't share any central seams. For those, I don't need to do the whole offsetting thing, I can just delete one half. With the body done, I quickly do the clothes. Since they don't have mirrored UVs because the sculpts are asymmetrical, I just have to apply the shrink wrap and triangulate modifiers that are still on there. I also go around and make sure that everything stuck to the right side of the original sculpt. And now the final thing left for me to do before I can export the model for baking is exploding it. For that, I take all the objects and move them nice and far apart so that I don't have any pieces overlapping that don't belong together. That way, the render engine can tell which high poly mesh belongs to which low poly mesh. For this model, I just did all that manually. I made sure I had the high poly and low poly version of each object selected, and then I just moved them around so that they had space. There are probably add-ons that could have done that automatically, but I couldn't think of any off the top of my head, and this didn't take that long anyway. Finally, with all that done, I switch around my collection scheme a bit. I make sure the everything belonging to the high poly body is in one collection, the low poly is one collection, and then the clothes high and low poly also have another collection each. That way I can select all the objects in one collection and then export them as an OBJ. I make sure that it's only exporting the selected objects and I don't change anything about the scale or anything like that. I do that for each part. I also make sure I have 
them named something sensible so I can recognize which is which later on. And now all the prep work is done and it's time to hop into Xnormal. First I go into the high definition meshes tag and import my high poly objects for the clothes and for the body. Then I go into the low definition meshes and do the same for the low poly meshes. Next I make sure the clothes are unchecked because I want to bake the body first. I also make sure that the mesh scale is the same for the high and low poly objects. Then in the low definition meshes section, I adjust the ray distance. I kept it at 1.5 for this model and it ended up working quite well. Next, go into the baking options, select where you want to save your textures and in what format. I chose TIFF. Then I make sure discard backface hits is selected and I've selected normal maps and ambient occlusion to render. Finally, hit the Generate Maps button and you have your finished maps. You can take a close look at them and then try them out in Blender and see if there are any problems. If there are, you can always adjust some of the settings like the ray distance and see if it works better. I ended up with maps I was happy with pretty quickly. Next, in the high and low definition meshes, I deselected the body and selected the clothes. Then, in the baking options, I selected a new location to save them and new names. And then I could generate the maps for the body too. And with that, the baking is pretty much done. Uh, baking in X normal worked quite well. I didn't run into most of the issues that I had with Blender. And there's still a couple of features I want to mess around with at some point later. Anyway, with that out of the way, back to Blender. I go back to my old Blend file, not the one that I used to export my models for baking, but the one that still has the proper UV map and the unapplied modifiers. I open up the Material Editor, and make sure I have a separate material for the clothes and for the body, since those have two sets of textures. And then I add in the normal map and the ambient occlusion map. The normal map I use normal map node and then the texture node. I also make sure I set the texture node to non-color data. And then I plug it into the basic principle shader. And the ambient occlusion map I just plug into the base color to begin with. And so far so good. The ambient occlusion map and especially the normal map turned out great, so I can move on to the texture painting. I add a new image texture for the base color, and then I add a mix RGB node set to multiply. That way I can mix the ambient occlusion with the base color. I also use a curl ramp node to adjust the color of the ambient occlusion. I use the same setup for the clothes, just with different textures. I open up the texture painting workspace and open up an additional image editor so I can import the ref sheet. I pin that image to make sure it doesn't disappear when I switch in and out of texture paint mode or switch objects. Then with the clothes hidden, I can go around painting the model. I start with the eyes, I use edit mode to select the irises and then just fill them in with yellow and blue. And then I move on to the face. I start adding color to it all over the place, and then I realize that the base color I had picked for the image texture doesn't match up with the base color on the actual character. So I use the color picker to pick the actual color of the ref. I use the color palette in the tool tab to save up the colors from the ref so I didn't have to constantly zoom back in and pick them again. And from here, I just continue to paint the entire model. I start with bigger patches of color and then slowly go down to the smaller details here and there. For the most part, I just use the default brush with the default settings for all of this. Make sure to look at your model from different angles a lot while painting, because you can easily end up with weird edges from projection paint which you're gonna need to clean up. For the eyes, I use edit mode to select where I want the irises to be, 
And then in texture paint mode, I can turn on the selection masking up in the corner to paint it in. Then I turn it off and go around adding more details. A bit of a gradient from the top to the bottom, some detailed lines, and a few highlights here and there. Since the eyes have different colors, I have to paint them individually, but I follow the same steps on the other eye. Finally, I go back to the face and add back in all the texture and patterns that I had removed previously because I got the wrong base color. Next, the teeth. I just fill them in in white and then paint in the gums. Then I follow the same process for the bottom teeth. And since I already have this color selected, I also do the tongue and the nails. To prevent weird seams or issues with the texture seeping through, I fill in the base of the image texture with the base color of the body. Then I go around with a blur brush, making sure everything is properly smoothed out and there aren't any weird gaps or jagged edges where they aren't supposed to be. Next, I paint the red stripe down her back and fill in the tail. Starting with the gradient going to the red and then filling in the inside of the mouth as well as painting all the teeth and the tongue. I also paint all her paw pads. Now the main body mesh is pretty much done. The only thing left for me to do real quick is fill in the inside of the mouth. Next I do the hair. That was super quick, I just had to fill in all the strands with a basic red. I originally considered adding a bit more detail in there, but I don't think it actually needed it. Plus, I'm not doing any like super detailed like texturing and shading on this one. They're gonna be relatively basic flat colors. At this point, I made separate materials for the hair and the eyes so I could mess around with stuff like the roughness and maybe even some metalness a bit more without that affecting the body. Occasionally, I go around stuff that I've already done and add a bit more detail here and there. And now it's finally time for the clothes. I start by filling in everything with flat colors, and then I go in and add a bit more detail here and there. For the jeans, I decided to paint in the ribs rather than making actual holes. That way, I can use the whole mask modifier situation to mask off the whole inside of the leg without having to keep some extra geometry so that there's something behind the holes. And for the most part, it's not really noticeable that there isn't actually a hole going through the jeans. When I've done that, I go around adding a bit of a lighter blue all over the place, so the places that are usually kind of worn on jeans. Then I add a bit of darker blue and fill in some of the creases a bit more, defining all kinds of edges. Just looking at pictures of actual jeans and kind of seeing which parts are darker and lighter. Then I do the jacket. For the most part, I'm gonna leave it one base flat color, but the various buttons and zips and stuff like that need to be painted gray. I considered actually adding a metalness map so that those parts can actually be metallic, but I eventually decided against it because they're just really small, not super noticeable pieces, and it would add a whole another image texture to the model. And with a couple more final tweaks here and there, I'm done with the texture painting and with that also done with the rest of the model. And here's the final model. I'm really really happy with how it turned out and the client really likes it too. I really enjoyed the process of making this model, there's quite a bit of new stuff I learned and stuff I was able to try out that I haven't really done much before. And I'll definitely be applying a lot of that in my future models too. I hope you guys enjoyed this series and maybe learned a thing or two yourselves. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, there's gonna be more of this kind of stuff in the future. If you have any questions or maybe even suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join the Discord and chat there. Anyway, that's been all for me for today. I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day and see you all next time.